is Verbo, and I play for Los Angeles Valiant. There's proof and there's evidence that this is going somewhere. Hey guys, Coach Alney with Generation Esports, here to bring you a new episode of Generation Next, our series where we teach you about opportunities and careers in the video game and esports industry. Today we paired up with Verbo, a former professional Overwatch player, to teach you guys how to go pro in Overwatch. Remember that this is just going to be an explanation of the path to pro system and some tips and advice from someone who's actually made it. To actually become a professional Overwatch player is extremely difficult and takes years of hard work, practice, and it's a long journey. But if you want to work in video games and esports, make sure to hit subscribe because we have plenty of other videos teaching you about other opportunities outside of just being a player that would be potentially just as exciting to you. But without further ado, we're going to hop into how you can go pro at Overwatch. So Blizzard implemented three different ways that you can get in. There's three different phases. So you first kind of get on a team, you sign up for Open Division. Open Division is a free to enter tournament series with a maximum number of 256 teams per event. Remember that these events are for PC only, as that is what is played professionally. You compete in these open tournaments currently hosted on Game Battles, where the top six teams then get invited into the final invitational tournament, where the top four teams get to move up in the Path to Pro system. You get into Contenders, the, the Contenders League. Contenders is currently made up of two stages, the Gauntlet and Regular Season. The Gauntlet takes four new teams from Open Division and pairs them up against the eight teams from the previous regular season. This is your first opportunity to make an impression and to win some serious money as an Overwatch player. From there, eight teams are invited back to the regular season and have the opportunity to start seeing much larger prize pools and access to professional scouts looking for the next star player. Once you land a spot on an Overwatch League roster, you have officially made it to the big leagues. You're receiving a much larger salary, prize pools, sponsorships, and amenities like housing and food. The minimum salary is $50,000 a year, but most players are making a salary range of seventy-five dollars to $200,000, with a yearly prize pool opportunity of three to four million. Two main things, you should integrate yourself and put yourself in scrims as soon as possible. I don't care what rank you are, you should be scrimming, practicing in a, in a competitive environment as soon as you can. It's only gonna teach you more about the game and the way the game is actually supposed to be played at a high level. And then the second thing is you should be probably watching more footage of gameplay than actually playing. At least that's what worked for me. Um, watching professional footage like VODs and you have such easy access to that now in Overwatch. Um, the actual like replay codes um, and Overwatch League matches, spectator modes are given to the public. So definitely those two points. So I like to tell people that solo queue is literally just a resume and it only should be a resume, that number. You shouldn't identify with it. You shouldn't put everything into it. And you shouldn't, if, if it's already giving you opportunities, why put yourself through that frustration and through that bad experience of how the game is supposed to, of how the game is played when you don't need to. I'd say, you know, play, it's important to play to get to a certain rank that'll give you opportunities to play on high competitive teams. Uh, but after that, I don't think it's really important. I think it's more important to watch VODs, to put more focus on scrims, um, and review that. I think solo queue only um, gives you that resume and helps you improve your mechanics. That's it. If you guys should be joining the Open Division Overwatch Discord, any competitive Overwatch Discord, you should be in there talking, messaging people. That's where scrims are posted. Competitive Overwatch too, for people who are just starting. Pretty much it. Yeah, tournaments, scrims are all posted in Discord. I think one, networking and building relationships. I think for me, um, and I think probably for most, when you look at a gamer or somebody that does play games for a long period of time, usually an introvert like myself, not really interested in building relationships and really talking to people. I personally have a habit of like isolating myself. That's what I did in high school. That's why I was playing games so often. And I think maybe some are like that as well. You got to break free of that, break out of your shell, network, build relationships that it will lead to other opportunities. Um, and number two, I think this is probably overlooked, but when you go into scrims or when you go into solo queue, have like one or two things that in your mind of what you want to improve on. Because I think a lot of guys are just going into solo queue, they're going into scrims um, and they're just like, I'm going to give it my absolute all and hope to God we win this match. That's not practice. Practice is you have one or two things in your mind, you know what you want to work on, and then you play the game. There's no room for tilt. There's no room for frustration when that's your mentality. I got a head start with learning how to be in a team environment, learning how to give feedback to people that I was with on a team, 
learning how to receive feedback, learning how to deal with wins, learning how to deal with losses. This is perfect for you. And it totally was for me. So I think, yeah, learning how to function in a team environment and thrive is something that is totally crucial for high school students, even for me when I was in high school. So yeah. COVID wasn't around, I think it'd actually be a lot easier now than ever, um, because I think a lot of veterans and a lot of top players are deciding to retire and step away from Overwatch, which obviously opens up a lot of opportunities for other players that are working their way up. So I think it's easier. There's also a clear path to pro rather than when I did it, where it was all about just getting recognized and knowing, knowing somebody else. Um, now it's just, if you got the skill, you'll get recognized eventually. It's only a matter of time. That's going to do it for this episode of Generation Next. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please hit that subscribe button. We're coming back to you with a lot more opportunities and videos explaining career paths in esports and video games. But until then, I'll see you in the next video.